And we are back for another episode of Pack Sports Zone. I'm your host, Peter Pac-Man Clark, and it's another week of sports in the New York area. And obviously, my Braves fans out there and my Titans fans out there, um, probably Braves fans probably watching TV as the game is going on right now on a Saturday afternoon. Um, but I would be remiss if I didn't start this off with what happened in the past week with the New York Mets. Uh, the New York Mets were eliminated from the playoffs in the wild card round against the San Diego Padres. It, and... I'm going to make this short and sweet, uh, but pretty much the Mets getting shut out game three last Sunday. The, and it comes down to this. Your last six games that were started by the Grom, Max, and Bassett, you lost five of them. You can't do that when you have two aces and a good pitcher and in in Chris Bassett starting six games and you lose your, the last five of them. And there's a team that has a lot of free agents coming up this pat next off season, but three big ones, obviously. And that's Jacob deGrom, that's Edwin Diaz, and that's Brandon Nemo. You got to find, if you're the Mets, especially a team that has this new big shot owner, supposed to be the billionaire that can keep anybody and go and buy anybody, he needs to keep all three of them because uh, even though deGrom is 34, he still can go out there and get a three, four year deal. Probably still going to make about $35 million a year. So you need to give him about 150 for four years and keep him in New York. Diaz, obviously, we know how important he is. Not only do you have to keep him, but you need to bring up one or two bullpen arms so you can bridge the gap to Diaz so he's not pitching in the seventh inning uh, against the Padres or pitching in the eighth inning uh, in so many games that he has this year. And then Brandon Nemo. Uh, he had, didn't have the greatest of years, but he's still an important piece to this team, leadoff hitter on um, good defense. So you still need to bring him back also. So the Mets got a lot of decisions to make this all season, but they're going to have to make them and find a way to bring those three guys back and got to find out the, you got to find a way to win those games when, and I'm going to bring this to Francisco Lindor. You're paying him over $300 million. You can't have him disappearing in the Brave series or disappearing in the Padre series in the biggest series that, of the season. He's got to show up in those type of series when you need him to. Um, but we'll see what happens in the next, uh, obviously in the next couple of months as we head into the off season, we'll see what happens in free agency. So who the Mets bring in, who the Mets bring back and everything like that. Um, a, with that being said, the Yankees will be playing tonight at 7.30. They are in a 1-1 series lock with the, guard, the Cleveland Guardians. Uh, Judge so far, 0 for 8 with 7 strikeouts in 2 games. He actually got some boos yesterday. Uh, kind of amazing that every, pretty much he was the rolling rock star for the past couple weeks and months trying to hit the, the 60-second home run to break the AL record. He does that. He's so close to getting a triple crown. And now it takes two games before he's getting booed in New York. It's a, it's a cold world out there. But, uh, today they will have, excuse me, tonight they will have Luis Severino, who pitched about, I would say half the season this year, but he pitched well in that half a season. So he's got to find a way to get the Yankees to a 2-1 lead, uh, as they go to game four in Cleveland. Now that crowd is going to be nuts today. So they definitely need a good start out of Severino and then game four. The second game in Cleveland will be started by Garrett Cole. So, uh, two, two of the best Yankee pitchers will be pitching the two road games to try to take the lead and or maybe finish off the series against the Cleveland Guardians. The Atlanta Braves now, uh, pretty much they're looking like they're about to be knocked out by the Phillies. Um, Charlie Morton started the game. He got knocked out after two innings. He got hit in the elbow in the second inning. Um, but he did finish the inning. And then as he started to warm up the next inning, he was taken out. Um, Strider, he only was able to get through two and one third yesterday before he was knocked out. Uh, gave up the grand slam to Ryan Hoskins, Hoskins. And, and that was, it rolled from there. Brian, um, Bryce Harper came and got a home run and Phillies just rolled from there. Uh, Charlie Morton, though, I don't understand the move to re-sign Charlie Morton to $20 million a year next year. And this was not a, something that was done at the start of the year or after he had a couple good starts. He start, he play, he has pitched bad this year. He's given up 28 home runs in the regular season. He's flirted around a four and five ERA for most of the year. And they, they guaranteed, they gave him a contract that was 20 million next year and then a club option for the year after for another 20 million. I don't understand the reason for bringing him back, especially when you know a pitcher like Jacob DeGrom will be out there 
He's uh, he was an Atlanta Braves fan when he when he grew up. Uh, he's everybody outside the inside the baseball knowledge said if he leaves the Mets, it's probably going to be towards the Atlanta Braves. So why not just use that twenty million and throw it into a Degrom offer? A Degrom's probably gonna for the Braves. They're saying that he may even take a pay cut to come to Atlanta. That's it just. It, that's the team he wants to pitch for. So put throw that twenty million into the ground contract. There's no reason that you should have gave that contract to Charlie Charlie uh, Morton. Uh, Real Moto during this game hit an inside the park home run on a bad defensive job by Ronald Acuna. It hit pretty much as a drive to center field, left center field, bounced off the fence, and it it rolled all the way pretty much to right field where Acuna should have been backing him up, but Acuna didn't move over. So the Braves were down four, one really quick in this game. And that four, one lead felt like it was 10 to one. It really felt like it was much more than just a four, one lead. So unless the Braves can, <coughs> excuse me, unless the Braves can come back, uh, I'll be talking next week about what the Braves will be doing in this off season. And maybe they'll be talking about possibly finding a way to get a DeGrom or, but we'll see because they have their pitching pretty much locked up for next year. We know Freed's going to be there. We know Wright's going to be there. Uh, it looks like Strider's going to be there. We obviously signed him to that big contract. Um, so who knows what they're going to do if they're going to have money to do that. I know the Braves said they want to get into around the top five in spending. They're already inside the top 10 in spending. So we'll see how far, far they will go to see if they will possibly go after a top free agent. But it's right now, as for today, it's not looking good down to the Phillies. And it, we, we got to see what happens the rest of this game. But it's not looking good for the Braves fans out there. Moving on to football, though, the New York Giants got to got to give them complete props. I gave them no chance against the Green Bay Packers, and they got a shocking win over them. The defense was great, allowing no points in the second half. Um, Daniel Jones probably had his best game of past year for him. He's definitely the best game this year as he went out there. And, and it wasn't about the yards, but the point is, is that he actually made passes where he had to make passes. And you just look at his stats from that game and it was a uh, 21 for 27, 217 yards and another 37 yards on the ground when we know he had a bad ankle. Uh, he had like a, a cut on his hand where you can see his hand was all bloody and he was playing through it. But the first time Daniel Jones actually showed some real good toughness and he played through it. Obviously, I don't know if it'll continue. I doubt it will, but. To go along with that, how much more can you say about Saquon Barkley? Saquon was Saquon. Uh, only 13 carries. He did go out for a drive or two because he was hurt for a second, but he came right back in, made another big play. He had 13 carries for 70 yards on the ground. He also had another 36, car- um, three, ca- rest, excuse me, three receptions for another 36 passes reception yards in the air. So another 100 yard total day for Saquon Barkley as the Giants shocked the Green Bay Packers 27 to 22. Uh, listen, like I said, can't, can't give it any more credit than they, they deserve all the credit. They were unbelievable that game, especially in the second half. Um, can't really bash anybody in that game. Uh, Adore, Adore in the secondary played good. The line played good. Everybody played good and they found a way to beat Green Bay. Next week, they will be playing against the Baltimore Ravens where, uh, defensive coordinator Wink Martindale will be going against, uh, his former co- coaching teammate, excuse me, um, as he was the def- defensive coordinator of the Baltimore Ravens at one point and saw Lamar Jackson in, in, in his face every single day in practice. Well, now he's going to be going against them for the game as Baltimore Ravens come in here. We know that they're not really a great passing team other than Andrews. You got to cover their tight end, Mark Andrews, but it's going to be poundable and Lamar Jackson. And it's, every time Baltimore Ravens play as Lamar Jackson's show. So it's extremely hard to stop him as Dan Patrick will play. You can't really stop him. You just have to, have to contain him. That's what they're going to have to do with him. They're going to have to try to find a way to contain him as Baltimore is going to be coming in here and they've been very up and down. They've had a blown a lot of leads recently. Uh, obviously the big one that they lost to Miami Dolphins. They lost one to the Buffalo Bills. Uh, I think they're tired of it and they're, they're going to try to send a message by the Giants way. So, uh, Giants win this game and people are going to start thinking they're for real. Uh, obviously teams are, they've already raised the eyebrow with how well they have pitched so far, but they're really going to start getting noticed if they're able to pull off the win and beat Baltimore this week. New York Jets 
dominant this week, I may say. Uh, a 40-pointer that they put up on the Miami Dolphins. Now, the Dolphins didn't have their starting quarterback in Tua. They didn't have their backup quarterback in Bridgewater as he pretty much played for one play. And, and after that one play, he was out with uh, injuries as well as concussions. So not really the best day to be a Miami Dolphins quarterback. But you know what? You can't be, you can't worry about that if you're a Jets fan. Um, Zach Wilson was okay. Brees, another breakout game. He was spectacular. 197 total yards and a touchdown. I told people before the year that I think he had a chance to be a star. You could see between his size and his vision and his speed. That's the type of back that if you just put an above average line with him, he's going to be a breakout guy and he's proven it right now as Michael Carter pretty much just comes in to steal his touchdowns after a long, after the long Brees runs. But Brees is a star in the making. Uh, he's already showing it just, just to say that somebody has 197 yards on the day and a touchdown. Uh, you can see everything that he brings to the table. Uh, next week, speaking of Green Bay, as we mentioned, uh, before the Giants, they, the Jets will be playing Green Bay. So you're going to be facing a, a Green Bay team that's probably picked pretty angry after losing the London game, um, not playing well, getting shut out in the second half. Uh, so we'll see if the, the just like we're going to see a lot of the Giants to see if they can pull off a win, another win as an underdog against a Baltimore team. This would be a huge win if the Jets can find a way to beat Green Bay in a game that, just like I didn't really give the Giants much of a chance, I don't really give the Jets much of a chance to win this game. Uh, I just think that Green Bay is going to be locked in to try to snap out of whatever funk they were in the second half of last week. And I think they'll find a way to probably try to put up 30 points on the Jets. But we'll see. Like I said, maybe the Jets are for real. Maybe they slow Rodgers down. Maybe Green Bay is just overrated. Uh, I mean, they don't have great wide receivers. Uh, they do have two good running backs, but they're not really clicking as much as they would want to. And it's just right now not a good situation for Aaron Rodgers and that team. So maybe the Jets can take advantage of that and find a way to win. But moving on to the Tennessee Titans, they had yet another close win as they seem to do that with every single one of their weeks is either a close win or a close loss. Um, they had that win versus the Washington Commanders. Uh, David Long Jr. with an interception under a minute left of Carson Wentz. A great play on this interception as a diving interception. And obviously the King Derrick Henry, another 100 yards on the ground. Uh, he had 132 total. Uh, now the Jet, now they, after the win like that, a game that first of all shouldn't have been that close, but you say that pretty much every game with the Tennessee Titans. They let, um, Dynami Brown get two bombs over the top that shouldn't have happened. And let me just quickly say, uh, I know Titans fans right now, they hate the secondary. They keep giving up bombs, but you have to realize who's playing in the secondary. It means such a huge difference when people are out. Everybody said, oh, now we need to get a cornerback. We need to get another safety. We need to get two cornerbacks. You don't really need anything right now when people are healthy. The problem is people are hurt. I mean, you went out there and got uh, McCrary in the second round when you didn't even need a cornerback. Now you need a quarterback, so I understand that. But you don't need to get another one. I mean, you obviously got Fulton, who's a very good cornerback. You got McCrary, who you took out there in the second round. Even if Caleb Far Farley is going to be the fourth quarterback, because when Molden comes back, he's the slot guy, so he's the third quarterback. Then you can work it in and you don't have to see Terrence Mitchell give up 200 yards to anybody because that's the guy that really needs to be out of here. I understand people want to get fairly out of here because he's falling down on deep play, deep plays and everything like that. But the guy who's really getting killed is Terrence Mitchell. He doesn't need to be on the roster. So when Molden comes back, you have your, your top four fairly comes in chess and dime situations. Then, uh, he's not, he's not guarding the first or second or third best wide receiver. Uh, when Hooker is there, Hooker and Byron are two of the best safety tandems in the league. The secondary isn't bad. You don't have to worry about them as much as you are looking at right now and thinking about them. Defense is fine. I said that for the whole year. Uh, they've had some mental lapses. I think they had a little bit of a hangover from last year in the playoff game, but the defense is fine. I don't think you have to worry about them. It's the offense that needs to be taken care of. You need another wide receiver. You need a left tackle. You need a guard. Those are the three things you need on offense. And obviously Todd Downing is not the greatest play caller in the world. You need a play caller, but that's not, but that's not something that's just going to appear out of nowhere in the middle of the season. So you're going to have to deal with him, but. 
I just don't understand some of the situations with the Titans offense. I don't understand why they don't go out there and get a wide receiver uh, like DJ Moore from the Carolina Panthers because DJ Moore is making is going to be making much less than A.J. Brown. He's a productive wide receiver. He's gotten 1,100 yards three straight seasons. He, he's a good player. He doesn't he doesn't seem to be one of the wide receivers that's a little bit on the crazy side like a lot of wide receivers out there. And he's 25 years old. Uh, so And he's done this 1,100 yards the past three seasons with people like Sam Darnold as his quarterback. Or people, it's been a bad situation, and he's still find a way to produce. So I would personally give him a first-round pick for him because – you're gonna you're probably gonna have a low first round pick in the twenties anyway. If you can get a good wide receiver that's gonna be your number one wide receiver, I think it's worth it. So especially at the price that he is, he signed for the next three years. And I don't think with the bonuses that the Carolina Panthers would have to pay on that contract in a trade, you'll be paying him less than twenty million a year each year. Uh and this year he's only costing about six million. So I think that's what you gotta go out and do. But with that being said, uh, we still want to talk really quick as today is Saturday afternoon. And if you are watching ESPN Plus, if you can, if it's actually working for you, you may be watching the two best women's fight abouts that you'll see in a long time. Uh, at the co-main event, Michaela Mailer and Alicia um, Baumgartner are fighting off. They're two girls that really hate each other. If you saw any of the press conferences, any of the face-offs, all you hear is a bunch of bleeps. As This has been brewing for a long time, whether it's on Twitter, whether it's face-to-face, whether it's in interviews. They can't stand to be in the same room with each other. So that's a fight that you really want to see. That's going to be the co-main event, too. Clarissa Shields and Savannah Marshall. Uh, two, two other people that don't really like each other. I'm not going to get into the nonsense that's been rumored for the past couple days about the two. But the point is, is that they don't like each other. Um, Marshall is a heavy-handed, heavy-handed girl puncher. Um, Carissa is more skilled, in my opinion. So both fights, I think, are going to be a really good fight. If you have to go by me, I'm going to say Michaela Mayer wins by decision, just because I don't think she has the power to knock out Alicia. And I think Clarissa wins by decision, just because I think her skill level is better than Savannah. Even though Savannah is much taller, she has a, a good reach, she has the power advantage. But I think in terms of skill, Clarissa will be able to find a way to pull that one out. So those are my picks for the two very, very good uh, female events tonight. And after that's done, excuse me, and that's starting actually now. So if, like I said, if you can get onto the ESPN Plus app, you can start watching that now. But later tonight, Deontay Wilder makes his return to the ring after his loss to Tyson Fury as uh, it looked like we may not see Deontay Wilder for a while. Uh, he's been off for a long time, but he will make his re- return tonight at the Barclays Center in New York. He'll be facing Robert Hellenius. Uh, is, listen, Hellenius is a, a guy who was a top 10 type heavyweight. Some people may still have him on the borderline of that. He may be a little bit past that to me, but the point is that it's a good comeback fight for Wilder. Uh, Wilder is a guy that I don't want to see him get thrown in and already have to face a top five heavyweight after the time that he's had off. The one thing I really like is Wilder went back down to 214 in weight. I thought that against Fury, he tried to beat Fury at his game. And one of the things about Deontay Wilder is that he is one of the most athletic heavyweights out there. You can criticize him about his skill. You can't criticize him about that right hand because one of the biggest power power punches in the entire sport at but and you can criticize about how skinny his legs are but the point is that he goes in there he loads up he knocks people out and he's done that to every single opponent he's done except for Tyson Fury and he even did that to Tyson Fury in the first fight and he's one second away from knocking him out so i i think that when he decided to gain weight and he went up to almost 240 for the for the Fury fight it slowed him down. He got tired during the, during later in that round. Excuse me, later in that fight. Then the same thing happened in the second fight and in, in the third fight. I, I just don't like that strategy. Stay at what works with you. Be two fifteen, no more than two twenty. Move use move your legs to get around that ring. Find a way to throw an awkward angled right hand that catches them and knocks them out. And then that's it. You can yell bomb squad and run out the ring in New York City in in New York and Brooklyn. So, uh. I think Deontay Wilder wins this fight under six rounds. If I had to choose a round, I would probably say 
I mean, unless you get a first round knockout, like he catches him quick, I would say probably fourth round. I would say fourth round is where I would say Deontay Wilder wins against Robert Hellenius. But it's a good Saturday night for sports. You got a lot of stuff on. I didn't even mention uh, the Houston Astros and the Seattle Mariners, which is 2-0 for right now for the Houston Astros, as they will also try to put an end to their series and move on to the ALCS. So it's a big day of sports. I uh, want to give a shout out to my brother, Dave Quinones, today. Uh, he turns too old, so I'm not going to tell you his age, but happy birthday to him. And once again, we'll be with you next week. Uh, you probably won't be hearing this song anymore since the Mets are eliminated, but I'm not going to count this completely as a Mets song. Shout out to Wilson Contreras, um, William Contreras. But I'm your host, Peter Pacman Clark. Have a great sports weekend with all the baseball today, college football today, all the NFL tomorrow, and I will catch you guys next week on Pac Sports Zone. Peace out.